rice cookers. Last car to pull apart before getting stuck into the K-Swap on the RD1. Um, I'll put a little link somewhere around here to an older video if you want to see where I got this and more about it. But basically I'm pulling it apart because I need the oil drive manual transmission that's in here, along with the half shaft, um, axles, shifting linkages, loom, etc, etc. Let's go with the K24A3 I have over here. Slap that all in uh, my wife's CRV so she can rip some mad dick. And uh, yeah, let's get stuck into it. First thing I need to do is remove this hood because I feel like it's gonna get in the way, but also because someone lost the hood stay for this. So I can't exactly prop a broom up in here the whole time I'm working on it. Now I need to take off all the front bumper. I think that's just going to make life a little easier. Got the front bumper off. I'm just going to disconnect the battery and then remove these headlights. And uh, it kind of looks like you can unbolt this upper rad support, which might make pulling the engine out a little bit easier. So I think we'll go for that. I was going to use this rad in the RD1, but that's poked in the bin. Headlight and battery removed. Uh, gives you quite a bit more space around here. Um, let's see where are these bolts. So you can get an idea of how to do this. There's two back in here, here on the side, the silver one. And then, then just your uh, obvious ones on the top. Then we got the loom over here. You can unplug it if you like. And all of these, but I think I'm just going to cut this like I did the other side. Ugh. Fucking spider cuts. Man, I hate them. Finally remove this hoary ass. Intake setup, which is good because I've actually kind of missed having a bungee around, and it's my only one. I'm just going to get this in the air and um, drain it, and we'll come back to pulling more of it apart. Got the uh, upper rad support off and the um, AC condenser thingy, the upper rad support there, taking off all the loom that was underneath it. So this is just kind of hanging here at the moment, still draining. Uh, gonna have to let that drain for a little bit. Need to disconnect the ECU and feed that through. Yeah. All right, just moved inside the car to um, remove what I think is the ECU. Um, it looks like there's some ghetto ass duct tape that's been wrapped around it, which around the loom, which is a bit weird. So let's pull this um pull this sucker out and see what it is. It is a what is this? PNB something something something. I'm gonna have to look that up. It's probably junk. Probably can't be used for K-Pro, but maybe it's useful for Fuck, I don't know. Probably just fucking junk. Right, well, transmission and engine oil are draining. While they're doing their thing, probably get the uh, wheels off because I'm going to need to get the axles out. Oh man, those fuckers are seized on there. That's a 36. Soak this in uh, WD-40, I think, with the nut f***er set to max. Oh, nice, it's not seized. Right, that ball joint is a 17.
Oh man, that doesn't feel the greatest. This may have been obvious to most of you, but it wasn't to me. Uh, easiest way to get the axle out is actually just removing the knuckle from the bottom of the strut and then pulling it out far enough to get the, uh, the axle through. Obviously you gotta disconnect the brake line from its mount on the strut and take off all these clips for the ABS so that that doesn't get yanked out. But it's a lot easier way to do it than taking off this bottom ball because it's hard to get back in. Managed to get this out, which was quite stuck on there. But that's both drive shafts or axles removed now. And I've just realized something else that I didn't know about these RD5s. The ABS ring goes inside the hub, not on the actual axle itself which is going to mean problems for me with the CRV because of the fucking auto axles and so that's going to be fun down the line have to see if I can swap the outers with the inners oh god I don't know now we're under the car at the um, prop shaft this is coming out of the transfer case on the all-wheel drive gearbox. These are um, multi tens, so I think it's 12.10 mil front and back. So the tip two. Okay, that'll work. So that's the uh, the nut on two with an adapter. Alright, so here we are at the diff end. Same thing again. Get that through the drive shaft hoop here. Hoop, hoop here. Yep, and. There we go, prop shelf out. I'll be taking these axles and this rear diff. So, anyone who knows, let me know. This is a 2002 RD5 JDM CRV K20 all wheel drive setup. Obviously, it's manual. Huh. Can you tell me if this diff is worth using compared to the ID one? Char. Here we are under the back of the engine. This is where the uh, exhaust goes four to one. So I'm gonna have to take disconnect this so the engine can pop out of here. Right, I'm gonna have to stop that before this gun gets wedged in here. I think we can go up up top now and focus on the engine loom, the heater core, shift linkages, fuel line. Yeah. I need to pull this um, ECU loom through now, I think. Okay, you just have to pull on those clip tab things quite hard. There it is. That is a CRV butthole. Ooh. Fucking little nuggets. Let's get this airbox out of here. With the airbox removed, we got access to the shift linkages and the transmission mount. Got the uh, clutch pretty much completely empty of all its fluid. Clutch master, clutch slave and master. Charge harness has been removed from here. Now this is a funny little design with some 10 mils. That kind of cover it, I'm, I'm assuming that's for, so that shit doesn't fall in it, I don't know. But it, it's a real pain in the ass.
There it is. Let's see, what are we up to? We've got the power steering disconnected. We've got the mm. AC lines disconnected. Heater pipes disconnected from the firewall. Clutch line disconnected. Fuel line disconnected. I am now just about to start on taking the selectors off. And once that's done, um, I think I'm ready to actually pull this out. So, we're we'll pulling this out very soon. Okay, I'm gonna keep track of this. I guess that's pretty, probably pretty important. These removed from the selector. There's just a few 12 mils holding this bracket on. And that's got the shift linkage. That's the reason for doing this whole f***ing job. Transfer case. Man, this thing's dirty. Just in the middle of tagging and removing this loom because it needs to be reused for the case swap into the uh, first gen RD1 CRV. Then I can uh, move on to removing this all-wheel drive gearbox and slapping it on the K24. So yeah, when we come back hopefully this will be all stripped and we can move on to the fun stuff. Okay, well, I got the loom off, but it looks like it's not going to work for my K-Swap application. I'm going to have to dig into it a bit deeper and verify that, but spoken with Adam over at Speed Science and he's been through a lot of this, so I'm going to trust him on that. Um, crank position plug is already, seems like it's off. These ones are the same. Cam, cam timing sensors seem the same. The plugs are the same, but that doesn't really help me when it looks like even my uh, ECU plugs are a bit weird. going to have to verify all this, but it looks like now I'm going to probably need purchase a fucking loom which I didn't account for but that's okay um, 
got the gearbox, got the clutch, got drive shafts, got shift linkages, got fuel solutions, blah de blah de blah. So you can put that gearbox on that engine and then put it in the um, RD1 CRV. It's not gonna stop me making progress. Can put that lumen, fit it when it's already in the car, so mild uh, annoyance and possibly an $800 oversight here in New Zealand, but that's okay. Got one more, one other thing to point out. Um, obviously this is throttle cable controlled. And when I purchased this engine, it came with this bag covering the throttle body all zipped up. I never bothered to remove it because I didn't want anything to fall in the um, throttle body. But under closer inspection, this is a drive-by wire throttle body, which means I have to go down that road of throttle by wire pedal and what's needed to do that, whether the K-Pro is going to be able to do it. I've never looked into it. Um, probably not, which means now I have to find a another throttle body. Um, if the one from that engine or my other K24 over there aren't a suitable um, replacement, then I'm going to have to start looking down intake. Uh, and if, they're, if they're not a suitable route, I'm going to have to start looking down an aftermarket route, uh, which again is more money. And then there's that classic while well, you're in there kind of scenario where I'm going to put a better throttle body on it. Why don't I put a better intake manifold? And the next thing you know, you've spent another fucking $1,500, $2,000. So yeah, this is the joys of K-Swaps. Even with the adequate amounts of research that you think you've done, there's always going to be surprises. And especially here in New Zealand, because we have a lot of um, JDM vehicles and when we try and look up a lot of information it's all based in America just because you guys were the first ones to be doing all this so can't always trust a lot of what you read because it doesn't correlate with what we have here but you know that's all part of the learning so moving forward let's get this gearbox off I think there's a bolt up top here for the starter motor, um, so I'm going to just quickly strip down most of this engine. Man, this this fucking engine smells like shit. It's like something fucking died in here. Anyway, um, got all this shit off the front just to avoid bending, breaking any of that stuff in case I need to use it for anything in the future. Got the starter motor off. Um, I'm still not 100% sure that actually had to come off to get the bell housing off, but it's off anyway. Um, gonna lift this up now and try and get access to some of the bottom bolts for this. And then we'll bring it back down and um, take off the main top ones and get this fucker off of there. Thing not to forget are these 10 mils for the um, shield for the flywheel. These little fuckers will cause a little bit of mischief. Oh, and there we go. Holy shit. It's full of rust. Say this uh, clutch is fucking cooked. Multi point 17. Well, I think it's called 10 or 12 point, something like that. But it's got a tapered edge, which I guess allows you to get onto bolts when they're tough to reach places. But in this case, 
actually kind of make things worse. So I might sand this down. Put this on the uh, belt sander and got rid of all those edges so that this is more square. So I can have more grab on the bolts and set this thing to two. Let's see if we can get these off. Your subscriptions to this channel in the beginning are um, really, really helpful. I'm slowly building up to that 1000 and that 4000 watch minutes or whatever the hell it is. Um, so thanks for your support so far, but if you really want to help, then subscribing would be the best way to do it. And thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. See ya.